two of my vision that I believe was from our creator, God, and I call him Homer for home. This is part two. Okay, so this is when we would be able to keep our identities intact. So after thousands and thousands of physical incarnations and di on different planes and dimensions, God had finally reached a point where he had his masculine and feminine polarities and dualities in harmony and balance with each other. Also, he mastered magic and science and was a master magician, a numerologist, an alchemist, a scientist, a healer, and a mathematician. And also, he had achieved the knowledge of science and genetics and mastery over the elements and forces of the ethereal and physical worlds. <clears throat> now that he had graduated into being a master of all trades and he had impressed the Aloha, or, well, his creator, who I called the Universal Counselor, Grand Masters, I used to say Loham, but now I don't think that that's the same thing. But he tells me that his creator had something to do with unicorns, but that's really all I know. Okay, so now that God had pleased his creators and earned their respect and acknowledgement, he was given the gift of being able to create life. Uh, wait, he was given the gift of being able to create life and to use his abilities to design and create anything he wanted. The universe is huge, and God told me that there are many different places and aspects of experiences and experiments going on simultaneously. Going on simultaneously. Hang on, we'll pause real quick. <laughs> Go ahead, one, two, three. Yeah, Go. you're on. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. The universe is huge, and he told me that there are many different places and aspects of experiences and experiments going on simultaneously throughout the universe. He told me that he is not the only God. He told me that he is or was the God over or Father over this creation, well, because this was, is, or was his creation, and that he is one of the many who had achieved the right to create. And he had been given a place to do this behind the sun somewhere. This is the place that I would call the Cosmic Kingdom, I call it that, or Heaven, as many refer to it. <clears throat> I call it home. So anyhow, he has a great love and respect for his creations, the mermaids, which he created from the sweat and blood and tears of his labors. And when he created his planet and his homeland, he also created the beautiful clear oceans um, for the mermaids. And they also, also they sang a lot, and their beautiful voices would send out the frequencies to create a fertile atmosphere to allow for color, sound, and life into his kingdom. So his first creations were those of the mermaids, and there were seven of them, and they um, were connected to the seven chakras and the seven colors in the rainbow. And um, his planet was beautiful. It had beautiful flowers, and there were two huge butterflies, as big as houses, and mountains of gold and silver, and the most beautiful blue waters to allow the world of the mermaids to blend with his. He had the most extraordinary creations like what we hear, see here on Earth. All of the different trees and flowers and plants and butterflies. I'm not sure if there were a lot of insects, but he did create cats and dogs and elephants. And he liked to cruise riding on the backs of his easygoing elephants. Now he was a scientist and magician and he could change the atmosphere if it suited him. And he wanted to create something more personal. He wanted to create a people in his image as he was a person, a man. It was one big question I had, and he told me that before he completely separated the masculine and the feminine, which he's getting ready to do in a minute, that all creation was made through science and genetics um, and in laboratories, and that there was boy and girl, but that they had like pee holes. There wasn't a penis or a vagina yet. He said everybody was created through science and technology and genetics and stuff. So there was no babies. People were like were created growing up, whatever. Okay, so he was a, he is a man though, or boy. And so, yes, he, God is a man. And he decided to create his image, and so he created the 12 original tribes. <clears throat> now, he did not have sex with the mermaids, but they were all his love, all seven of them. They were all females, and they had red hair and blue eyes, and he adored them, as they did him. So he went into his laboratory, and he used his DNA out of his 12 chakras. And the 12 is what is needed to function as a complete entity or a godhead with identity. The seven, like, be us and to be, have our grail powers and be like a god, you know, to get those is twelve. And he had twelve. And 
he had complete balance of his masculine and feminine energies. So he created a man and woman out of each chakra. So there was a king and queen or a king and queen or a god and goddess for each one of the twelve different tribes. He created out of his own chakras. And if you think about it, a life form from the crown chakra and the genitals and the solar plexus, etc., would turn out quite different. And they would look different and develop different and speak different languages. <clears throat> So God decided to make 12 planets circling his planet, and this would be where the 12 would grow and develop and reside, each having their own planet. And he did good, and he thought this was amazing, and his heart went out to his creations. So now remember, there was no sex yet. So each one of the nationalities had a special link to one of Homer's chakras. But, um, also, they developed in their personalities and their belief systems according to the particular chakra that they were made from. And they were so lucky enough, and they were lucky enough to have a creator who loved them and honored them and kept nothing from them. And so now they were made physical, and the 12 tribes each had seven chakras functioning inside of them, okay, which in order for all this to happen was because the seven spirits, okay, and the, seven, the mermaids, each seven of them, one was each represented a different chakra of the seven chakras. So even though there were seven different mermaids, they still couldn't live without each other because they all, they were the chakra system, okay. Um, and uh, so they developed in their personalities and their belief systems according to the particular chakra they're made from. Okay, now Homer, they had 12 chakras functioning, and Homer had 12, God. Okay. And he loved his creations and he watched them grow and develop. And also, the cosmic kingdom had all of the science and technology and magic and spirituality that he could create. And they could visit each other on each other's planets through advanced forms of transportation. And they had ships and shuttles, and also they were telepathic, so they could communicate that way also. There was love and respect, and no one had hate or malice in their hearts. So they would visit each other on each other's planets, and they also had their own planets that they returned to to live and further develop their species. Each one was different. And so they themselves created their own trees and plants and flowers and animals of various kinds that were also created by the individual tribes. Now these tribes would relate to the 12 signs in the zodiac, and that's why there are special plants and trees and flowers and elements and colors, etc., that correspond with each tribe or sign or planet, <clears throat> so formatted in modern astrology today. So now, there was no death because this level of evolution had made it possible for Homer to keep his identity intact without having to go through a series of incarnations, death, and resurrection. So to live for a million years was no big deal because the soul never dies. And he loved his creations and he especially loved the rainbows because these were the light that came from the spirits of the divinity of the seven physical chakras that functioned inside of the twelve tribes and the mermaids. So being made in God's image is what the twelve tribes were. And they multiplied their offspring off of the seven chakras in their own laboratories. And seven is the most magical number because it cannot be reduced or multiplied between one and ten. Like six, you can go two, four, six. Every number can, you know, break itself down. But seven, it can't. It, does, it doesn't have a mate. So therefore, it's zero and infinity at the same time. And that's why in Las Vegas, you know, the seven, seven, seven on the slot machines, you don't see two, 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 or five, five, five. The seven, seven, seven is a code. It has to do with the 666, and I told you about that in a different show. But anyway, so um, the seven, so seven is zero and infinity at the same time. This heaven had no problem with disease or illness because the plants and flowers here were huge, and they had the most sweet, intoxicating smell. That the entire atmosphere was filled with the sweet aroma of the varying flowers, which produced healing and enlightenment just from being breathed by the citizens of heaven. So now Homer, God, decided after a while that he wanted to create something else. Someone that he, he could live with on his home planet. And he decided to go back into his laboratory and um, separate his masculine and feminine. And like I said, it was taboo in the universe at that time to separate, completely separate. Like I said, they were uh, homorphodized. There was boy and girl, but there wasn't man and woman. But Everything is supposed to come from the one, the whole, and they were afraid that if they completely separated the masculine and feminine and didn't have a little bit of each and everybody, that it would be, they were afraid, they didn't know what would happen, and it had never been done, but Homer did it anyway. Homer did it anyway. 
Okay, well then we'll be at part three in just a second, okay? I'm almost done.